as you know, uh, the COVID-19 uh, has uh, impacted all sectors and uh, is changing uh, a lot of things in uh, our lives. Hospitality and tourism sector is uh, uh, impacted in, a, in an unprecedented way. And uh, of course, uh, uh, it aims to recover. That's what uh, inspires Ryan Martin events to host this panel session titled Hospitality Reborn under the umbrella of WOW Hospitality Trends Summit worldwide to motivate discussions in creating a roadmap to the recovery of the hospitality sector. Today we have with us the industry experts and leaders sharing insights on being prepared to fight such future pandemics. So um, I'm uh, very pleased to have uh, Mr. Wael Rashid, who is CEO of Meeting Point Hotels, in, based in Egypt. Mr. Shiv uh, Mehan, Chief Operating Officer at Leisure Hotels Group India. Mr. Alessandro Maria Tedesco, Chief Operating Officer at EBC International, Global Hospitality Procurement Management Company based in the UAE. Mr. Darwish Baker, Principal from Signature Global Development and Management Company in KSA. We hope that he will uh, manage to join us. And Mrs. Mahu Chandok, Director and Founding Partner, PIP 2020 India. So, for um, as uh, you know, uh, we have uh, uh, divided this discussion in three parts. There is uh, in part one challenges during unprecedented times. So, for the first question, I will uh, ask uh, Mr. Wael Rashid and uh, maybe also. Uh, if uh, Mr. Shiv Mehan can uh, also uh, address this uh, question. So the question is, what types of challenges are you facing in opening a hotel after a lockdown in terms of minimal levels of occupancy, ensuring you pay attention to the smallest detail in order to play a role in each guest journey, maintain, maintain cost efficiencies, and limiting exposure to housekeeping staff to guests. Thank you, Mr. Belgami. I think it's been a learning experience uh, for all of us during the, the, the past period. And, uh, you know, we've been um, on a hotel level, we've been trained previously on handling pandemics inside a hotel, inside the, inside the city as well, but not across the world or across countries. So. Um, I think um, opening up again, it was, uh, it's never an easy decision to take in general because variable, will I have my human resources required in order to be able to get them from the different geographic locations that they are in, especially in Egypt, we get our labor force from different villages and cities, whereby uh, in certain cases we were not able to, uh, to, to, to uh, bring in our staff because the pandemic was on a high level in these villages and hence the, they were under lockdown. So categorizing your, your, your workforce into A team, B team, C team, in some cases you were not able to get the caliber that you require, the state of mind of the staff. Some are ready, some are able. Some have situations in their families. Some have a certain fear level. They're afraid to be uh, to be uh, working in this industry at this time, reopening the hotels. That means that they're gonna deal with different people all the time, be exposed, probably get their, their families exposed. The, the government in Egypt also, the Ministry of Health and, and Ministry of Tourism, they they had a set of regulations that uh, required to be followed and in which and which minimizes or tries to minimize mm -hmm. uh, the exposure to the staff by keeping them working for like 60 days in sequence in mm -hmm. um, on the properties so 
it, it is from the from from the staff level we had or from the team members level we had to deal with their emotional psychological uh, factors so there was a lot of uh, community pre arrival to the hotel communication as well as re induction and retraining in everything from scratch for the post covid-19 operation in terms of 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 getting ready for the hotel getting the hotels open obviously it's not anything it's not new what is required by the level of hygiene and cleanliness that should be the norm that is the norm it's just that having a scary virus around this makes it gives it a little bit more important but you know you are required to uh, clean always the high touch points be that uh, the remote control of the tv the handle of the the door whatever so we as meeting point hotels we partnered with uh, ecolab and with uh, cristal in order yeah. to build the protocol called clean 2.0 and mm -hmm. which developed all the different programs and protocols per department on which we based our reopening strategy as well as the induction and training plan as well as the re reworking of the SOPs into more localized operating procedures that work and obviously updating the checklists as well so uh, uh, also we had to change the way we do business meaning the way we disinfect the rooms the way we we make sure that the guest feels comfortable upon arrival feels that whatever has been done while they were not there they sense it they feel it and they feel it a safe experience we keep housekeeping services on demand so uh, no one will enter your room once you check in after it being disinfected after first check in only when you request uh, the room to be cleaned then we will enter and then disinfect the disinfection process will happen all over again cost wise yeah. we maintained the majority of our employees so um, it's a matter of trying to break even and minimizing costs it's never an easy position but uh, we already had a strong uh, uh, the team on board with a skeleton team uh, on the properties the rest are at home getting a minimum mm -hmm. you know just the the regular payment with government support but opening up we just had to make sure that our variable costs mm -hmm. are well are efficient uh, but you you're just trying to 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 break even basically so we had to open and as soon as one we did we opened our first hotel 15 june and our second hotel on the 1st of july and we're going into 50 percent occupancies now by by eight period that's very good mr rashid i, I think um, that uh, you've been also trying to to boost the confidence uh, of your teams during this uh, very unusual and difficult period of time. Absolutely. And uh, that's uh, through training and uh, sometimes uh, team building. And uh, I think, yeah, yeah, you, you have to be you have to be very transparent with the team. And, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're in this together and uh, and it's not easy. It's 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 the first time uh, for all of us. Uh, we've uh, reimagined the business slightly and I think uh, the more we inform our associates, the more we take care of them, but the more it's yeah. not like we are trying to take care of the guests and not care. Of course, they, our most important asset is the team member mm -hmm. and, and, and the management and, and hence making them safe and making them feel comfortable. We've changed, of course, the uh, uh, staff accommodation distribution in a way that allows for proper social distancing. Even when any new staff came on board, they were quarantined for seven days in order, as per government requirement, in order to, to, to make sure, in order to make sure that they're safe. And of course, a new set of procedures to follow, which uh, make uh, operation uh, and, and the morale of the hotel uh, on a better level. Okay. Thank me. you very much. So we are going to move on to the next question. Uh, which is addressed to Dr. Madhu Shandor. So, Dr. Please uh, share your views on transformation of hotel designs to increase operation, operational efficiency post COVID-19. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for us, it's afternoon. So, for you, it's good morning. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, what I would say what this pandemic has done to each one of us it has given us time to introspect and also understand how we do what so basically based on that the since for at least 2 3 years the cost centers will have to be kept in mind while even specifying or designing which i even mentioned earlier so it's important that design needs to be much more minimalistic the areas will be much more flexible the designing of various spaces will be a little more flexible is what we feel and to create operational efficiencies and maybe another word which is revenue by design the designers need to really look at the functionality and relationship of the particular area so especially the hotels which are in operation probably it gives them time to revisit some of their dead spaces which were not used or which can be used for another function and bring back some revenue in these challenge times that could be looked at mm-hmm. multi use of spaces that means even spaces which were used for a particular function where it involved a bigger group can be subdivided by allocation of some screens allocation of some elements so that there is this physical distancing part as per the norms for a time to come even from a designing aspect more of integration of the inside outside will become very very popular in each and every place so because people would like to connect with nature also sus- keeping sustainability in mind and keeping how uh, emotionally we are reacting in these challenge times we need to make the place very much more uh, say for for someone to feel safe so the more the, the less touch points that we have and another thing that came out very strongly is that less is more you do not need and a lot of uh, say energy money and uh, say uh, budgeting will have to be done in technology we will have to embrace technology in design so that's another aspect that designers are working very closely with the uh, vendors and understanding the new uh, ways that we could engage with this touchless activity is also coming in even uh, say when you are doing your public spaces or public area washrooms although a lot already in this direction was already initiated even in the pre covid stage but i think it has just accelerated and you know acted the pandemic has ad- acted like a catalyst in just you know pushing this at a uh, shorter duration and things are, will be moving as far as design is concerned i feel in a uh, better direction and on the other hand from an operational efficiencies part the uh, man- manpower which i feel you know which is not directly but indirectly related to design the manpower and the people as such will also become very multitasking and multifunctional they need to be actually doing things see even in today's scenario when we see a resort which is which has a seasonal business there are certain months in the year when the business is not operating to a fuller occupancy so we come down to those occupancies and revisit the manpower in terms of the strength which actually reduces the fixed cost and then it can be done so i think the hr will become another very important function to establish to give a guideline to the designers to say okay how we can move that forward and how we can bring it together in a new normal situation and make the space still uh, uh, look very functional another aspect that i see part of the design is that all these hygiene aspects that are basically the ultraviolet machine the uh, sanitizing machines all these will have to be integrated in design in a manner not like an afterthought this has been quite strange but honestly speaking it's quite an upbeat in my point of view which means it has been awakening and we have to revisit a lot of issues but i feel a lot of good coming out of the, out of all of this certainly somehow uh, the impact not only on the hospitality sector in different divisions but of course on all um, 
what I wanted to say and focus on is that most importantly, we have to stay positive. We have to think and act positive. We need over and above everything to assure our clientele or customers of our brand. It's not the issue of reapplying the FFME irrespective of what strategy in its simpler pre-opening or post-opening strategy. That's not the case. The case is beyond sanitization. We need to stay focused. We need to stick to the brand. We need to stick to our values. We And we need to deliver on this. We do this, clients will come back to us not elsewhere, okay? Because we've been, in their point of view, solid as rock. Pampering our guests or clients, ultimately, I believe, uh, people want places and spaces where they feel comfortable, valued, and of course, inspired, and connected. This is what needs to be delivered. And that is exactly why people are looking forward to get out of their homes currently. So what we need to do, we need to have the blessings of the stakeholders or shareholders for the reinvestment. We're talking about space reformation. We're talking about services enhancements or revisit. We're talking about packages uh, redelivering. We're talking about replacements. We're talking about new taking initiatives. So, um, of course, when we talk about FFME, the use of some of the hotels uh, in different parts of the world, maybe by through the certain governments uh, uh, to receive some of the uh, COVID-19 so-called patients, they need to change or replace uh, to start with some of their uh, uh, furniture, but not the hard uh, loose furniture. I'm talking about the amenities, uh, and specifically uh, referring to bed, linen, uh, maybe the carpet, and of course maybe the uh, the curtains and what have you. But nothing to do with the uh, solid furniture itself. We need to revisit uh, uh, the space allocation of the furniture distancing. I believe. We ought to pay attention to sanitization, but not overdo it. At the end of the day, people are walking to a uh, hotel, which is where they want to uh, uh, have a diff uh, feel of a uh, change in their point of view. They don't want to feel they are walking into hospital. People are uh, people, they are human beings. We understand the, uh, uh, the situation, it's serious, all right, but we somehow, they need to feel at ease, they need to feel comfortable. So this is one I wanted to share in, in principle uh, before yeah. going into more details on this. I see this as a perfect opportunity to reconnect uh, the hotel industry as a whole with the occupancy levels on average uh, daily uh, rates, uh, we can um, uh, come back not only to normal, maybe better than before, and also hopefully build a, uh, a strong relationship going forward uh, after the crisis has ended. Of course, the FFME uh, uh, contribution where uh, we need to start with by uh, selecting or assembling the best team uh, available uh, within the hotel, uh, select them team members as a task force uh, to kick it off uh, of course, mostly we need, uh, or most importantly, we need to define their roles. We need to uh, have clear responsibility metrics with clear objectives uh, or project uh, goals as well, schedule and budget. And the budget is not uh, for immediate use. We need to reconsider the aftermath is uh, on uh, will take possibly 12 to 36 months in my point of view. Uh, we need to understand the business model and also do the due diligence for the services provided. Transparency here is imperative. Uh, we need to start by maybe hiring uh, an architect or to work along the lines of the FFME uh, or have the engagement of the FFME company uh, and uh, of course the contractor or the furniture supplier. Uh, 
Now, uh, once the plan uh, has been set in place, then we start uh, applying the debts uh, uh, on the ground immediately. And then we, uh, uh, we need to complement that with uh, quite hefty marketing packages uh, with communication to get that across with the right team on board. And that team has to be, as I said, because it's going to be selected, then it has to be, uh, they need to do the job right within, without additional capex or even with revisiting the capex altogether. So it's not only about human beings, it's also about uh, uh, what we need to work with, whether in, indoors or outdoors. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Alessandro. I'm uh, the Chief Operating Officer of FBC International. Uh, procurement management company. We work worldwide. Uh, the headquarters is where I sit in Dubai, and we have offices uh, in uh, uh, nine other countries at the moment. Um, I can tell you that uh, it has been an interesting uh, uh, path over the past uh, four months. Uh, I think uh, uh, the previous speakers uh, outlined the different challenges that we have faced. Uh, and uh, uh, Darwish as well gave uh, a clear understanding of uh, uh, what happened in our part uh, of uh, uh, the development process uh, as uh, FFNE and uh, OSNE uh, procurement entities. Um, we had definitely different kind of challenges. The first one, of course, that any business had was uh, start working remotely. Uh, which has been very smooth for us. We had a little bit of uh, uh, issues uh, in the uh, on-site operations, clearly depending by the country where we were in. At the moment we are working in 18 different countries worldwide and uh, uh, each country had uh, different challenges. We had countries uh, in Asia that were hit by the virus at earlier stages, so we're talking about February end of January, February, and we had uh, countries that uh, has just been hit recently, uh, like some countries in Africa. Uh, we had also countries that have not been hit almost uh, at all uh, by the virus. So um, I would say that is a very specific uh, location, geographical location related issue, even though it's a global uh, problem, but there are we have different approaches in the different countries. Uh, talking about uh, um, FFNE and OSNE specification standards, uh, uh, I believe uh, at the moment uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, attention and a lot of uh, worry about uh, uh, the operational part of the hospitality industry, especially because of all the regulations that are in place. Um, I believe really that is a, it will be a transiting phase uh, in a sense that uh, already since January to today uh, we saw that uh, different governments reacted to the pandemic in a different way, uh, in different ways. We saw that uh, uh, things are changing very rapidly. Every week, every other week we have an update that uh, modifies uh, approach and uh, a regulation that needs to be followed in also in traveling, as an example. Um, I believe that once uh, we will uh, approach the stage where uh, a vaccine or uh, a prevention to the virus will be in the market and available, uh, then all of this will somehow fade out slowly, slowly. Um, we saw in the design part uh, of the project uh, at a specific stage in the last two, three months, which definitely there's been uh, uh, an attention to space layout as, um, as uh, uh, was seen before by uh, Dr. Chandok uh, and also in specification of materials. So there is uh, an attention in avoiding uh, uh, in specifying materials which are difficult to be cleaned uh, on a daily basis. On the other hand, uh, um, frankly speaking, whatever was already in production uh, has not been touched at all. So whatever was specified before is what uh, uh, the client will find in the hotel. It will be interesting to see uh, if uh, 
uh, then all these regulation and attention that uh, are being put in place at the moment uh, will be followed up for a long time. Because I give you an example of Italy, my country, which has been one of the first to be affected by the by the COVID, but one of the first to come out uh, in a, in a nice shape. Uh, to the point that a month ago we were they were counting maybe few cases in digital in single digit per day. Uh, where I can assure you that uh, the networking and social life uh, has gone back to normality completely. Uh, you know, restaurants are open. There is a bit of restriction, yes, but uh, as an example, now masks are not uh, uh, mandatory anymore uh, if you are around the table. Uh, there is still the social distancing in between tables, but then uh, you are not limited to the people that can sit on a table. Uh, clubs have reopened, bars have reopened. Uh, so the, the will of people to go back to uh, what we are used to is pretty high. Uh, and I believe this will help a lot also in uh, uh, bringing back business to the level it was uh, in late 2019. For example, the wish in, in Saudi Arabia, I think it was interesting because, uh, um, you know, the, the country is very big. Uh, there's been a very, a very straight lockdown at a certain point, uh, to the point that not, still nowadays there's no flight going in and out the country. Uh, but how is the situation there? How, how, is, uh, how is life, how are projects? Look, um, I've, I've said before, uh, I've had a conversation with uh, uh, some of the hotel uh, operators here in, in Saudi, uh, to be specific in the capital, Riyadh. We had a discussion, uh, multiple discussions in different sessions. Uh, look, uh, really, luckily, uh, this lockdown has been uh, uh, fruitful to companies like our divisions in, in the hospitality part. We are in the FFND furniture fabrication. However, for their for their business, it has they've suffered a lot for a small or a short period of time. Why? Because the government used the uh, the lockdown. You, they use the hotel as accommodation for the 14 days interval for the COVID-19 patients. Initially, they felt good because they ha they somehow uh, guaranteed influx of uh, room occupancy or payment. But what they haven't realized is that after a short period of time, that this rate or those rates or this investment, uh, not investment, this influx of, uh, of money in, in return, they need to pay out after the, uh, uh, the COVID-19 is over uh, to reinvest to change the furniture, which is quite hefty. So what has been happening, the government has been paying some of the leading hotels, whether it's uh, three uh, to five star hotels, for the number of nationals, Saudis to be specific, uh, coming from abroad, from different countries, they have to spend 14 to 21 days in them hotels. So, uh, however, government now uh, is working toward supporting the industry by investing uh, in, in hotel development uh, because now uh, it is the opportunity to do so where everything, uh, where everybody is hungry to do business and the raw material is in its lowest uh, format. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Why do they have to change furniture like, after a quarantine period? Yeah, they have to change it because People know uh, that uh, the identified hotels have been used for quarantine. And as being, being a human being, they refuse to come to play to them hotels for uh, to continue the business, which is for the entertainment, whether to stay or whether to use any of their outlets. Okay? So yeah, but that's probably uh, probably a Saudi thing because we have hotels in the Canaries, we have hotels in Egypt that uh, that took quarantine business for for a few weeks, and uh, yeah, I, I didn't hear that challenge here. I think it's a Saudi thing. Uh, I would like to address it to Mr. Shiv Mehan and uh, also Mr. Wael Rashid. The next question is: Did the pandemic create a path? 
to increase technology innovation uh, in hotels? And how can you manage to provide a minimal contact environment to the guests with such less check-ins and check-outs and other social distancing measures while uh, your aim to focus on personalizing Is there anyone talking? the guest experience? Sorry, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Shiv Kumar Mayan. I'm a Chief Operating Officer for the Leisure Hotels Group out of India. Um, uh, we are a 30-year-old hotel company and we have uh, around 27 hotels and other units ranging from resorts to villas to camps to uh, business hotels. Um, India uh, went under lockdown in the beginning of, uh, so it was the end of March, around the 22nd and the 23rd. And our lockdown continued all the way till June. Um, um, having said that, the country has come out in, in basic phases uh, with, with uh, unlockdown one, two, three. Uh, the hotel industry was allowed to come online from the 1st of June. Um, so, as a background to your question, uh, you know, we, we shut down a lot of our hotels within March itself, but we had 14 operating out of that. Looking at this particular question, in, in all honesty, you know, we've, we've been studying of how to handle things when the operations open up. Around 80% of our properties are now open. Um, honestly, in our industry, I don't think services can be contactless. Uh, you know, the hotel industry is is, is is a very, very personalized industry. We like to term it as limited contact services, uh, in, in all honesty. Um, yes, the contactless angle has been introduced. Uh, you know, uh, so just to uh, name a few, you know, Contactless inquiry systems, uh, reservations over call, uh, reservations online, pre-registration, uh, check-in, check-out, room billing, and um, even uh, pre-arrival communication with travel assistance, route maps, etc., which reach you on WhatsApp. Um, soft copies of menus are on mobile platforms for the guests so because we've uh, removed all the menus. Uh, Soft copies for activity menus at hotels and resorts from can choose from. So all all these basic services have been done, but you know when it comes to uh, services like housekeeping, services like food and beverage, it can never be contactless. Um, technology and software, it, it's been developing at a pace in the last couple of years. Um, how do we feel that the pandemic has actually created the opportunity for more development of contactless industry solution? And at the same time, it's accelerated the adoption of services at a much larger scale. Uh, you know, the inevitable change to the cloud, to, to various contactless features. It's, it's, it's been forced upon us to adapt it today rather than wait for it for tomorrow. Um, Having said that, you know, social distancing with the hotel areas and distancing with the staff deliverables, it can be done to a point only. Um, excessive restriction, it dilutes the guest experience and, and as one of our colleagues earlier said, we want a hotel or a resort to feel like a hotel or a resort. We don't want it feeling like a hospital. You know, so, uh, you know, all those PPE suits, etc. We've actually kept that for only emergencies, otherwise not. I think your gloves, your face masks, or you know your your uh, aprons and your chemical um, mandate, your SOPs, they're more than enough to actually handle it. Um, in our system, you know, we've handled it with preventive attire, uh, uh, which I've already mentioned, and individual attention and personalization will always remain. Uh, touch points within guest rooms, guest areas. We've actually cut these down by 50%. You know, we, we've removed certain furnishing which was not mandatory. Uh, you know, um, within rooms, in public areas, cushions, bed runners, uh, paper products, tent cards, written promotional material, back up the house paper usage. We've removed all that. You know, so uh, we brought it down to what we refer to as, you know, a minimal luxury. That's what the industry refers to it as. Yeah. Food and beverage services will remain limited service, else the experience of course can't be delivered. Buffets are all out for the moment, uh, I think at least for the foreseeable couple of months. Fixed menus or table menus are very much on. Um, kitchen to table 
is what what we are actually pushing for side stations we are avoiding the route room service for distancing amongst yes of course it's been promoted now across the industry social gatherings conferencing in india that's been reduced to a maximum of about 50 people right now for packing for for conferencing so the big indian wedding uh, that's gone into dormancy for the time being but, but let's let that come back at you know thing before the vaccine but by and large yes uh, noise is control uh, intelligence that will continue to play play a role but i think sooner or later once the vaccine is in the industry will go back to a high level of personalization which we hope it should and and uh, mr mehan sir yeah the, do you think that uh, once we have the vaccine uh, maybe in uh, next year or the year after uh, do you think uh, that we will uh, go back to the way we used to deal with minds as before well um in all honesty you know some of the services or the contactless points which i've mentioned i think these have actually changed for the good it really uh, cuts down the entire process i think it cuts down the process of excessive manpower excessive paper usage i i, I think that uh, you know the reduction of paper has been really good for the environment and i think that's that's the way forward um so so i think that part of the digital aspect of technology and it that will remain and i think it's changed for the good the industry should continue to adopt it um on the other hand i still feel that you know uh, I, i think if i understand your question correctly when you mentioned mice um so i think that aspect will uh, will continue to remain and i think it should because you know uh, having events of of that never events of that magnitude is always good because you know at the end of the day we are a people industry it's, it's not going to change yeah and i don't think it should i thank you thank you very much and we move on to the next question that uh, i will address to mr wahid rashid uh, the question is the chinese word crisis means danger and opportunity uh, how can you make your operation more resilient during the pandemic and standing the best position to succeed i think it's uh, it's uh, you know it's something uh, i always say to uh, to my colleagues and uh, and my team members on uh, on this chinese proverb that crisis is always opportunity in the sense of we always it depends on us to to and our attitude and how we um, uh, readjust and adapt to the change in the, in the in the environment around us i think it's uh, moving forward uh, agility uh, uh, adaptation and and quick learnings uh, are key having a lean uh operation in the sense of uh ensuring uh, you're optimizing your scheduling optimizing your cost it's nothing new but it just uh, there is a, a re-emphasis on during challenging times to become more efficient look at the big picture more uh, uh, how can i achieve my sustain my sustainable uh sustainability objectives together with my protecting my bottom line and maximizing my bottom line uh with with some colleagues mentioned also multi uh, multi tasking uh yeah. which is going to be a new norm the it, it is the the hotel industry cannot it it has actually been a bit slow in embracing uh, uh technology and even innovation some lifestyle hotels have been able to and especially business city hotels but it's not enough it's mm-hmm. not enough and and if you look from a, from a developers owners operators point of view it's always smart automation is is extremely uh, important and this is now in this crisis that's what needs to come out uh, especially as we cater to the new customer because if, from a customer perspective we 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 work with different generations and the elderly might not be very much into uh, getting a room service delivered by a robot but a, a, a new generation and and would be definitely excited to deal with a machine that delivers 
uh, with a hot cabinet and a cold cabinet and whatever. So it's a transition market. It depends on your your target audience. It depends on your customers. But I think it, 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 there is no one size fits all. The only thing I can say, it's a time for agility and adaptation. And a good plan is always a flexible plan. Thank you very much for your insights, Mr. Wa'emi And then move on to the next question uh, that I will address to Alejandro. What are the adjustments that revise the supply and demand strategies in hotel operations amid and uh, post COVID-19? Uh, I can tell you about uh, uh, the supply and demand of uh, what we are involved in. Huh? Um, I can tell you that there's been uh, a little bit of uh, um, more uh, alert in uh, what are the operating supplies uh, selection, yeah. uh, especially uh, to be instigated in a new op in openings of new hotel. In the sense that uh, is a purchase that. Uh, Still have to happen for the for the client, so there is time to do it in a different way compared to what we, we were used to. Um, we had some requests of uh, open hotel to change some uh, items that they were having, especially if uh, because all all everything goes to back to how easy is to clean whatever they use on a daily basis. So there are items that are extremely easy to clean. There are items that maybe in the past, you know, they were in a, a sort of fabric finishing or in any case, uh, uh, suede or materials that are not really um, easy to be to be cleaned with a, with a disinfected product. Even though nowadays we saw a huge introduction of vaporizer, which are very powerful, <coughs> and, uh, very good. Um, so again, I, I believe is a is a transient thing which will last for uh, a short period of time, uh, mm -hmm. as long as uh, you know the the, the all uh, uh, medical and research uh, uh, industry will come up with, uh, with a solution, a vaccine or a serum or uh, uh, mm -hmm. or something you know to to mitigate the the, the danger of the of the COVID itself. Other than this, uh, there's been of course. Uh, Social distancing, so you know, FMB outlets uh, they require less uh, uh, of everything, less uh, furniture, less seat, less less seats, uh, uh, and less items. Uh, I think also the 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 par level will change uh, because maybe you will not have uh, uh, in the FMB all the services that you used to have uh, in a normal scheduling. But uh, I mean this. Uh, I believe uh, an operator can have uh, uh, a better understanding of the situation uh, and uh, a better answer for it because they are the ones which are actually implementing it. Uh, we get only a reflection of it uh, on uh, material that is uh, is asked us to be provided. Uh, Alessandro, actually, uh, I interior uh, designers uh, are more and more uh, specifying uh, uh, easy uh, to clean, to wash surfaces. So uh, they, they don't, uh, they, they less, but they go more for like tiles and so on. Do, do you think that this trend will uh, remain? After I believe, the as I don't know, it's, a, it's, in my opinion, is a transient phase. I have a this is giant. Uh, well, I think uh, I will have to take it forward from here. I'm, I'm sure there's something. I, I think there is a technical glitch uh, from Mr. Kamal's side. If you can possibly help me with the last question, uh, where I can take it forward from here. It was part three, maintaining operation cycle. What are the adjustments that revise the supply and demand strategies? Yes, and this was uh, for Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes, he he did answer that. Perfect. Uh, now we'll move on to the next question. Uh, we want to hear about uh, the qualification metrics uh, towards a supplier acquisition, keeping in mind health and well-being, very importantly. This goes Dr. Madhu Chandra, please. Yeah. So uh, based on the entire R&D and the 
uh, sort of learnings of this whole pandemic is concerned uh, not to say that we were not or specifiers or designers or hotel operations teams were not aware of the quality of the resource of their product so that means basically responsible buying in any case as per the brand standard as per the specification was in any case the dna of any organization but i think what has actually today it has triggered is to understand the source of the pro- products that we are buying thereby uh, when you are specifying a particular vendor uh, who is a manufacturing manufacturer or a trader how they are processing at what plant are they sustainable how are they treating from a health and hygiene point of view from a product that is leaving the factory till it reaches the hotel receiving point and then what are the uh, do's and don'ts with does, does it come with that how is it transported how are the logistics so all these are basically a checklist of questions that the brands and sops that they are all putting together in their procurement process whole uh, cycle and they are trying to get the responsible buying over and above there are a lot of innovations happening as we were talking earlier you know so there might be in saudi a little bit of an issue or or where say a hotel is being used for a covid uh, purpose and uh, uh, then later on when it comes back to the operations people might expect that you know the hard furniture and etc should be changed but i think on the other hand in this part of the world in india there are this big team of iit teams who i am working and trying to get some information from them who are working on a spray or a product that can be just applied on to the wooden surfaces on fabrics on any surface and it has a 100 day of antiviral and antimicrobial function so that means it is like a, a amc like an you know we say annual maintenance contract that you can sign up with them and they are working they are doing their final tests also getting iso certification so these are also things which will come up to our knowledge as we move forward because a lot of companies are already and uh, working very hard to develop these solutions to make uh, properties and make surfaces very safe for use for children there are a lot of uh, uh, even uh, export companies who are manufacturing furniture who are even uh, abiding by the um, natural and even for a say say even if a child for instance went and put his feet on that piece of wood it is not toxic anymore so all these are various certifications that will probably become a little mandatory part of our r&d when we are sourcing or when we are actually doing this responsible buying for our properties and the more uh, the i think it is the best time to have a vendor and a buyer engagement process be very transparent so that the cost economics also works and also it becomes a good opportunity for industry experts and procurement fraternity to come together on a single platform so that we could even work on the economics of buying because a product which is innovative might be not very efficient in terms of the purchasing power of certain brands so how i think this this as, as this is all a transition phase lot is being done but i think somewhere down the line in months to come there will be a lot of consolidation done and that's how we move so it 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 cannot be a one way traffic it has to be a requirement or say a brief of what is our expectancy in terms of a user to be given to the vendor and the vendor teams who are subject specialist in their material that they are buying or they are sorry manufacturing and selling they could do in their own research segment and come out with very very good solutions that's my thought what's awesome. that's a great thought thank you very much for sharing your insights uh dr madhu uh however our next question is for mr darvish bakir uh do hotels need to rethink their processing strategy post covid 19 uh a big yes certainly yes uh, right now uh, i'll give an example of the saudi arabia it's uh, is living like we are in limbo quarantine so uh, but for us to know hotels are not necessarily linked to travel 
people use hotels part of their entertainment lifestyle. So we don't approach any big picture goals without definitely having a strategy in place. And that strategy has to be prevention, which ensures that everyone who works for the hotel is on the same page and properly educated on what to do as the crisis unfolds. Definitely, this shows our uh, employees and our client, uh, customers uh, that we are prepared uh, in the event of an emergency. Being transparent with our strategy gives our employees peace of mind and empowers them to continue their work and their ability and creativity during these unprecedented times. <coughs> At the same time, promoting our prevention strategy to the public also opens up a transparent dialogue between us and our current and potential customers. Definitely, we need to act on both our clientele, on the internally and externally. But who are our internal clientele? They are our employees. So we need to work on redevelopment, re-engagement on the tools, involvement, interaction, programs, and above all, positive impact. Uh, now, since everything has somehow converted to online, we need uh, to in use or invest in the use of the increase of the data usage. When our clients feel beyond doubt that their safety is uh, uh, our top priority, definitely uh, we have solidified ourselves as their go-to place to book as their next time visit in uh, uh, to use for their entertainment and in their travel since the cities have now uh, back to normal with the travel. Yes, of course, and uh, this is going to change uh, the perspectives. Uh, of course, thank you very much. Also, I have a question uh, for Mr. Shiv Kumar Meenham. Shiv, if you can possibly share your views on reclaiming hotels' brand image by implementing different operating models. Thank you, Jay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll put it in a very short fashion. So, I think, you know, for our industry, the product is the brand. And and it needs to stay relevant to the consumer through the worst of crisis, whatever the crisis may be. Um, because we exist for the consumer. Um, building confidence in the customer and our, and our industry partners is extremely important to stay relevant. And that can only happen through continued communication on social media, digital platforms, and, and any other contactless features since you know we can't meet people nowadays. So, you need to stay in touch. So communication is the key to actually maintaining the brand through this entire period. Um, different operating models for our industry, you know, uh, I think our, our colleagues had earlier mentioned sustainability. So, you know, we need to sustain the business through the worst of the crisis. And, and mm -hmm. where our country is concerned, I think, uh, we are actually getting into a peak sort of mode and we are yet to see the worst of it. And for us, it's probably going to stretch a little longer than what we had anticipated. Uh, the tourism industry is the worst hit. So, you know, everybody has had to rethink every every aspect of the business. And to keep business sustained, you need to look at every option you can to keep your cash flows alive. Um, you know, hotel companies, especially where, where you know, you've got ownership models, etc. You need to look at adding on to your operating and management contracts. You need to look at options where you can, you know, sort of take your brand for marketing franchise, um, uh, for sales, for marketing, for standalone units, um, for standalone hotels and, and for, let's say, business properties on the whole. Uh, commercial spaces need to start getting utilized. You know, at the end of the day, a hotel is still a commercial venture. So every square foot or every square meter of commercial space is important and you need to liquidate that whichever way you can. Uh, lease out spaces which you don't want to develop. Um, spaces that you have which you're not going to be using. Take for example multiple restaurants in a hotel, multiple meeting rooms which are not going to be used. So start creating commercial workspaces across over there. 
we have we have the infrastructure we have the services to support all that start creating a place for uh, where companies can take up on offices create meeting rooms uh, utilize your laundry infrastructures to start you know uh, to start laundry operations for other hotels and for other smaller catering ventures um we, we have satellite kitchens we have banquet kitchens start putting them up for cloud kitchens cloud kitchens is a thing of the future it's already moving because of uh, covid and the whole world is ordering online um we have infrastructure in terms of manpower logistics we have the technical expertise open up when used for facilities management for other businesses put your entire infrastructure that you use and start you know generating revenue out of that uh, hotels have bakeries start using that infrastructure to start supplying beyond the hotel and not just catering to the hotel itself so you know like this there are so many other options but we are going to have to start thinking out of the box and beyond the four walls of our hotels or what we actually do even now that's awesome yeah uh, of course well, there's so many opportunities that we have to uh, figure out uh, of course uh, keeping in mind the health and well being not just for the guests and as well as uh, the staff uh the crew uh, that's very important uh, and most of it, that's that's what inspires Ryan Martin uh, where we could possibly have uh, you know a, a platform where we could gather uh, the industry experts under one platform where we have a uh, uh, a program called a uh, wow hospitality trends summit worldwide uh, which is going to happen uh, through a virtual conferencing which is going to be a live streaming where your inputs your insights will greatly help us in designing a uh, a great agenda for the virtual conference which is set to take place in month of this year online uh, and we will be sharing uh, the invites by email with uh, all of you and thank you very much for the time invested with us today and uh, Ryan Martin and team on behalf of the entire team uh, I'm very glad and very happy uh, and extend uh, of my best wishes to all of you and of course we all are together uh in creating a, a road map to the hospitality recovery thanks for the opportunity thank you thank you joyan thank, jo thank, thank you for inviting us thank you very much thank you, thank, you thank, you thank you very much for all of you thank you very much guys right. and so we look forward to working with you for world hospitality trend summit worldwide and uh have a great uh, collaborative discussions and a great insights shared amongst industry leaders like yourself thank you have bye. a great day ahead thank you jen thank you bye thank you bye, bye. 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 bye.